This episode is brought to you by 8 Sleep. With the ever-growing proliferation of renewable energy sources like wind and solar and new solar and wind breakthroughs seemingly every day, you got to think that we're pretty close to a future of pure, clean energy. But the question of how to store all that clean energy still remains a crucial factor. As engineers the world over seek the holy grail of battery storage, they leave no stone unturned. It's not like we could just make batteries out of thin air, or can we? One alluring option for grid energy storage is cryogenic energy storage, basically storing air as energy. Could this storage method pave the way for storing off-peak power for use later? And how does it stack up against other battery options like pumped hydro or lithium-ion battery storage? We cover all kinds of energy storage technology on this channel, from EV batteries with various chemistries to mechanical batteries like flywheels and Stirling engines. One notion that always crops up is that every technology has a trade-off. Pumped hydro is cheap with high energy efficiency but a low energy density. This means it requires a huge amount of space to store more energy, making it incompatible with certain regions. There's battery technology like lithium ion, which has high efficiency and density but requires a lot of resources, some of which are in short supply or difficult to acquire, meaning we have to make decisions about how best to allocate these resources. The best way forward is to have a variety of options available to fit ever-changing factors like size, cost, and environmental context. Over in the UK, technology innovators Highview Power have developed a proprietary cryogenic energy storage system that's really started to turn the heads of investors and environmentalists alike. Now, when we think of cryogenics, you might be picturing Han Solo frozen in carbonite or the myth that Walt Disney's frozen body is stored in a secret lab under Disneyland, which we can neither confirm nor deny. But cryo storage is nowhere near as elusive or creepy. The company's technology actually derives from liquid air engines invented by engineer Peter Dearman in the early 2000s. Over the last two decades, Highview Power, together with researchers at the University of Leeds, built upon and refined Dearman's engine to produce something that could realistically become a viable replacement for the UK's current power infrastructure. Like all energy-based systems, Highview Power's cryo air battery consists of three main processes, a charging system, a storage phase, and a discharge phase. The charging process begins by using off-peak electricity, for instance, when the wind turbine spins in the afternoon when no one is home or watching TV or warming the tea kettle. That energy powers two centrifugal, integrally geared compressors. One main air compressor that pulls air out of the atmosphere and a second recycle compressor which drives the refrigeration cycle. These compressors super cool the surrounding air. We're talking colder than cold. Actually, it's even colder than that. We're talking minus 196 degrees Celsius or negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold enough for the air which typically exists in a gaseous state to become a liquid. That cold compressed air, now in liquid form, gets stored in heat insulated low pressure vessels until all those Brits come home from work and start turning on their lights and flipping on the telly. The cryogenic battery storage system takes advantage of the relationship between temperature, volume, and pressure, described by the ideal gas law. Think of boiling water. Water, unlike air, is liquid at room temperature. And if sufficient heat is applied or pressure is dropped, say by putting water in a vacuum, it'll turn to gas and expand in volume. This complex relationship is how the refrigeration cycle in air conditioners and fridges work. And it's also at the core of this energy storage technology. When power is needed, the liquid air is heated back up to ambient temperatures and drawn from the vessel, where it undergoes rapid regasification. Yes, that's <laughs> actually a real word. During this stage, the gas expands up to 700 times in volume, going from a low pressure in the tank to incredibly high pressure. Think of pressing the button on a can of compressed air you might use to clean your keyboard, only on a much larger scale. The high pressure air is used to drive a turbine which then generates electricity. The process uses clever processes to recycle the heat and cold during the charge and discharge process. As the air is compressed, the heat that escapes gets stored. Remember, there's technically no such thing as cold only the absence of heat. So instead of letting that heat just escape into the atmosphere, the system includes a method of storing that heat when charging, then applying it using heat exchangers to an intermediate heat transfer fluid during discharge. Sounds complicated, but basically 
they're harnessing the heat and using it back and forth in the loop to become more efficient. Also, during discharge, the very cold air released during the process is exhausted and captured by proprietary high-grade cold store where it can be used later to enhance the battery's overall efficiency. More on that in a little bit. One main benefit of cryo storage over other technologies is the flexibility and scalability. Unlike pumped hydro, as we mentioned at the top, which requires large amounts of space, cryo storage can be located anywhere and there's no size limitation or geographical constraint. It's particularly well suited for niche applications for decentralized power. In fact, Hive Power plans to locate a 50 megawatt, 500 megawatt hour liquid air energy storage facility in the Atacama region in Chile. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about our sponsor this week, 8 Sleep, and this, their Pod 3 cover. You can get their full pod mattress or just get the pod cover for your existing bed like I did. And this thing seriously is amazing. No, it's not magic, but it sure feels like it. There is a water cooling system built in with dual zone climate, which means I can set my temperature separately from my wife from 55 degrees all the way to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This is huge for us because our room is on the top floor of our house and gets really hot in the summertime. To save money, I got a window AC instead of running my whole house AC. But even then, sleep in the summer is a hot mess. With the 8 sleep system, I sleep sooner and spend longer in deep sleep. Their app allows you to set your ideal cooling profile to best fit your body's natural rhythms and even tracks your sleep and gives you a score. Clinical data shows that 8 sleep users experience up to 19% increases in recovery, up to 32% in improvement in sleep quality, and up to 34% more deep sleep. Go to 8sleep.com slash 2bit to start sleeping cool this summer and save $150 on the pod. 8sleep currently ships within the US, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU, and Australia. Huge thanks to 8sleep and you for supporting the show. But let's talk about efficiency. How do these cryo batteries stack up to other energy storage technologies in the market today? In terms of overall efficiency, lithium-ion batteries still reign supreme at between 85 and 95 percent efficient. While lithium ion can and is being used for grid level storage, they tend to excel in things like computers, phones, and even electric cars. With demand for lithium and other EV battery materials soaring, it would be nice to have other options for larger grid storage. Okay, so what about other forms of storage? Right now in the U.S., pumped hydro accounts for about 95 percent of utility scale energy storage, making it by far the most popular. And for good reason. In terms of efficiency, it falls not far behind lithium ion at a range between 70 and 85 percent. It's also the cheapest energy storage technology in the world in terms of cost per installed kilowatt hour of capacity, ranging between 100 and 200 per kilowatt hour compared to between 390 and 580 for lithium ion batteries and around 400 per kilowatt hour of natural gas. So how do cryo batteries stack up? Right now, base efficiency is relatively low, around 25%, but developers have found several ways to get the most out of these systems. A third-party review from DNVGL, an international accredited registrar and classification society in Norway, suggests that without the use of external thermal energy, the charge-discharge cycle of cryo batteries can reach efficiencies in the minimum of around 55%. Configured to receive thermal energy from an external source, say thermal exhaust from another power plant could achieve round trip efficiencies of between 65 and 75 percent, which would make them far more competitive. By using waste heat from nearby industrial facilities, Highview has been able to successfully achieve 70 percent efficiency in their pilot facilities in the UK. And by efficiently recycling their own heat from the charging station, these facilities could become even more efficient in theory. Right now, a 10-hour, 200-megawatt, 1.2-gigawatt-hour cryo battery system offers a levelized cost of storage around $140 per megawatt hour. But unlike chemical storage, with cryo batteries, the bigger the facility, the lower the cost becomes. Because all you're really paying for is the tanks and all the infrastructure, but the air doesn't add up as you increase the battery size. According to Dr. Javier Cavada, Highview CEO, a 50 megawatt, six hour duration installation hit the point of inflection to get cost below lithium ion. But he says with duration installations at 10, 12, or even 16 hours, the cost drops below lithium ion significantly. So while the technology may trail behind other storage methods in terms of efficiency, the cost and flexibility of cryo energy storage can be really attractive, especially in places where options like pumped hydro storage may not be feasible. The best part about the technology is that unlike so much of what we cover on this channel, these systems exist today. Highview has already begun construction on their first 50 megawatt project in the UK with a planned four gigawatt hour pipeline of projects, including some in the US and as we mentioned above, Latin America. I do like energy storage approaches that utilize very abundant materials and 
What's more abundant than air? Plus, there's no mining or supply chains to contend with. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, every form of energy storage comes down to efficiency. If I have 100 kilowatt hours of energy and I need to store it, how much actually gets stored? An efficiency of 90% for lithium-ion batteries means 90 kilowatt hours actually makes it into storage. Most energy storage converts energy in the charge cycle. For pumped hydro, you run big pumps to move water up into a higher reservoir. But to get that water back, all you need to do is open a gate and let the gravity do the rest. Unfortunately for cryogenic energy storage, this isn't the case. Energy is converted from excess electricity into potential energy in compressed liquefied gas. But to get that energy back out, the liquid gas needs to be heated, which also requires energy. As we outlined, the key to make this sort of storage viable will be the synergy of housing alongside other industrial processes. Anything that produces excess waste heat, think anything with a heat pump or smelters, can make good sites for such a technology. The more waste heat that can be harnessed, the less extra energy is needed for the discharge process to initialize. But even then, this technology will never be as efficient as lithium-ion batteries. But if we could get close to 60 or 70%, that might actually be good enough, especially as producing wind and solar gets cheaper and cheaper and more and more abundant. Like everything in engineering, you can draw a spectrum of trade-offs and try to find the ideal solution. More exotic materials, complex supply chains and more efficiency, or utter abundance and lower efficiency. But with research into this sort of technology, at least we'll have every possible option available to us in the coming years. But let us know what you think. What are some regions or contexts that could benefit from something like the cryo battery? Does the lower cost make up for the subpar efficiency? Sound off in the comments below. All right, you know I love energy storage, and I love when you can store energy without having to do any mining or deal with supply chains. That's really the heart of this story. And as you mentioned, if you can harness waste heat from some other plant nearby, there's some good synergy there. And that could probably make a little bit of sense. But all right, that's a look at the cryo battery. Huge thanks to all of you guys for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week.